South Africa and a very warm welcome to you. This is our Afternoon Express, Kukalang. And joining us today, we have got our resident chef and foodie in the kitchen, Chef Dumza. How are you doing, girl? I am doing so well, Balasa, and I'm really looking excited to, the, to today's show because of the celebration behind it. Yay! excited too and joining us in the celebratory mood is Esther Milan. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now it's such a blessing to have you today because we're celebrating the mamas. Mm -hmm. Yes we are and it's very important because I mean they mean so much, much to us so yeah. we have to celebrate them. And <laughs> on that note this week we've been building up to Mother's Day and today's Afternoon Express Masterclass will have you brimming with culinary ideas on how to spoil mom on Sunday. Now let's open up today's menu guided by professional chef Esther Milan. <laughs> We're elevating Millie bread by adding cheese and bacon. We're also perfecting our poached eggs technique and then we're serving them alongside baby marrow fritters. We're also sweetening up the deal with red velvet beetroot cupcakes and our awesome viewers are also joining us virtually to make crumbed lamb liver schnitzels with tomato salsa. Now I'm Balisa Dembe and let's celebrate our mothers in style. Now where do we get started for our very first recipe? Okay so so for the mealy bread, um, you are going to fry some bacon for us. Um, only the chopped up ones. The other ones we're going to keep whole and put on top. And then you could please chop the um, coriander for me and chili. And then I'm going to start mixing the ingredients for the batter. So first we've got the flour um, and then the pepper. We've got salt and baking powder. Mm. And then we just mix that. Mix it all together. Now, Dumi, essentially, what makes this recipe so special? You know, a lot of uh, children and young ones out there, they love to bless mom with a breakfast in bed on Mother's Day. Is this sticking to the same theme? It definitely is, Balesa. And for me, one of the few things that speaks volumes when it comes to love, it's got to be a beautifully baked, fresh loaf of bread. Now, something that is classic to South Africans is milli. So now we're taking this milli bread, but we're elevating it, sprucing it up mm -hmm. by adding some cheese and some bacon. Now, this is taking eggs and bacon to a next <laughs> level. Yes, <laughs> definitely. And I mean, you can even, instead of bacon, you can even add like biltong. Ooh. Yes, or other the herbs, I mean, go wild. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about Mother's Day, Esther, and I'd like to perhaps find out if your mom had any influence in your career becoming a, a foodie. Um, I think my whole family actually had an influence <laughs> on me. I mean, we're a very big foodie family, and um, my mom, she um, used to cook jam in the house and everything. My dad used to actually cook the dinners more. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but they are extremely supportive, so I mean, they have supported me my entire career, so I think that's why mm. I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> now, I know, Dumi, you're also very close to Umama. At the end of the day, I think that they are such huge inspirations when it comes to the people we, we turn out to be at the end of the day. Our passion, our drives, and things that we absolutely love. Yeah. A lot of the time, if you trickle all the way back, it starts with our mothers. So I love the fact, Chad, that you've brought something to the rescue um, that we can just spoil her with. Yes. Heartwarming stuff. So what have you added to your bowl? Okay, so I have added the milis. Um, I'm just going to mix that through. And then I'm going to add the chili and coriander. And then after you've fried the bacon, we're going to add that too. Brilliant. Yes. And then after that, we're going to add this mix, which I made. It's buttermilk and eggs. And then you can also even use yogurt or even almasi oh. instead of buttermilk. Whatever you have in the fridge. Beautiful. <laughs> and it is getting a little chilly. It is getting a little colder, so I can see myself enjoying this mini bread at any time of the day with some tea or a little cool drink, depending if it's hot or cold, I'm here for it. So this is a versatile recipe. Very yes. versatile. Very versatile palace. Almost as versatile as our mom's palate. Because if there's one thing I can remember is my mom was able to whip up so many amazing dishes with so, sometimes so little, but also yeah. so much in the house, and she would mm. put it together, and you wonder how I became a chef. I actually started realizing that the reason I'm a chef and a foodie is because of what she used to feed me, mm. you know? And because of that, I'm like trying to replicate mm. those flavors, those that the nostalgia that came with the dishes that she made. But I'm not gonna talk too much, Palace. <laughs> I need to get my uh, hands busy here. So may I please ask you to pass me the uh, cheese from the fridge okay. there? I need to get um, started with the grating there. I've just passed you the... Just don't touch your eyes, now. It's uh, that chili. Maybe Yo, Dooney, you came with <laughs> a wide chili. range. Wait, wait, wait. 
<laughs> you came with a huge range of cheeses. We've got the tassas, the clover tassas cheese. We've got the gouda cheese as well. There's a few more cheeses in there. Do you want me to pop that in? Or this? All in. <laughs> okay. There's never okay. too much okay. cheese. Uh, all over <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the one thing I love about cheese is that you can never go wrong. Whether you're putting uh, it sake. in a, an omelette, whether you're putting it in bread, it always just takes your dish to the No, place. I see why Dumi had me go back for some more because you got the big guns. Yeah, for me, cheddar goes with almost anything in any dish. Oh, thank you so much, Esther. <laughs> It, it, it is so good to go. So here we see us playing with different cheeses within this recipe. Mm -hmm. Basically, Balasa, that's another thing. We're adding a whole other dimension of flavors because some of the cheeses tend to be a little on the sweeter side, some of them mm. a little on the tart side. So all those flavors together with the bacon and the chili, oh. just amazing. And that's the thing with cheese. I mean, it adds so much more flavor. So I'm just grating up your cheese for you. Perfect, Tell me, thank can you. Can you please pass me just a wooden spoon here? I just sure. want to mix up this bacon, make sure that it's cooked on every, <laughs> or every and all sides. Um, delicious. I love bacon. Oh, bacon is you. also super versatile, but mm. also what I love about bacon, it contains its very own fat, yes. it contains its own salt, so it is so easy to kind of flavor and play with bacon flavors here. And what's nice with the bacon as well, you don't have to use that exact amount. Mm. I mean, we only want the flavor. So if you have, say you're cooking pasta mm. and you are using bacon, you can even keep two strips aside mm. and then chop that and use it in the bread. Well, so you don't think about your two to. slices. Ah, I remembered. <laughs> Uh, Esther said, do not chop up all of your little bacon. Make it look bacon. pretty. Make it look pretty. <laughs> it look so pretty. I want to add those uh, bacon strips on the top of our loaf. Yes. Okay, as soon as it needs to get into the, the oven. I but these are pretty done, yeah. yeah. I think I can you give can this take to you. That. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because that's actually what I wanted to ask, um, Esther, because now we're frying up that uh, bacon. Mm. Would you still want to fry it up how you'd normally eat it? Because some people like their bacon very crispy. I'm not one of them. Mm. I prefer it like this way. Yeah. yeah so would you want to, because it's still going to get baked in the, mm. in the bread? I, I think for the bread, it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, cook it as however you want to. Mm. Uh, me, personally, I like cooking bacon in the oven. Oh. on a wire rack so all the yeah. fat kind of drips off and then you can use that bacon chop it up and put it in but then also you can use the fat for instance to grease your tin yeah. so there's more yes. flavor yes because there's something very important before we started esther was like hold up i need to make sure that my baking tray is well oiled so that nothing sticks around the edges mm -hmm. so that when she's mm. it's time to lift that loaf it lifts perfectly and yes. effortlessly every single time so i love the fact and the little trick that you're using here to say that that bacon bacon fat mm. at the end of the day. We also that. see it here um, in our greased pan that we can just use that around mm. the edges. And, and you can that. even keep that in a jar or something and when you cook, add a bit of it, mm. there's like more flavor for whatever you're cooking at the moment. Nothing so. goes to waste. <laughs> Nothing. Definitely, but I'm don't also like wasting. <laughs> so we're yeah. also elevating a different type of off cut mm. with our viewers later on. Yes. Are you excited for that? I am. I know, we're yes. talking about I lamb can. livers. I mean, when I first heard about this recipe, <laughs> I was like, girl, lamb liver, crumbed <laughs> lamb liver, schnitzel sounds amazing, sounds out of this world. But that's what this recipe is all about. And that's what our masterclass cook along, Stumi, mm. is what it's all about. You're taking our time and breaking mm. down each and every recipe for the greater good of our viewers. How did you get your start in cooking? It was never a task. Mm. It was always our family used to cook together. We still do actually. My brother cooks as well, my dad cooks, my mom cooks. Um, and we've always been in the kitchen together and that was our family time. Mm. Then I started studying um, at the private hotel school and I did hospitality management and then I thought, you know, I don't really want to do that anymore. <laughs> I do love cooking but I also love writing. Oh. So um, I think it's combining the two. So cooking and writing and then... Girl, I see you starting up your very <laughs> own food, blogging, <laughs> blogging where you're in front of the camera, behind the camera, writing mm. down um, different things, writing down different yeah. recipes. Because that's what it's all about. I mean, seeing you mix up this recipe already in almost no time is absolute excellence to me. I mean, in my eyes, this is iconic. You've already added in now your wet ingredients mm -hmm. to your dry ingredients. I saw you yeah. creating a well. And then oh, after yes. you created your well, you just incorporated all those recipes in and now into the pan. Yeah, that helps with um, it not being too lumpy because mm -hmm. if you put the um, liquid in the middle, then it's easier to mix and it doesn't slosh all over the place. And then yes. into the uh, oven it goes. How long and what's the temperature? Um, it is for 50 to 60 minutes um, and then at uh, 180. Brilliant. And some more cheese. cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to our clover cheese. <laughs> into the pan it goes. 
that. And it comes out looking as delicious as that. Simple, easy palasa in less than 20 minutes. We've got a deliciously tasty, well, excluding the baking part. <laughs> a deliciously tasty bread, um, loaf of bread. I love that. So uh, before I give South Africa what our social media question is, mm. would you like to let us know what's up? What are we going to be cooking after these? Oh, after these, we are doing the baby marrow fritters with poached egg. Mm. Delicious. So, All of yeah. these details will be on our Afternoon Express website. <laughs> now, Mother's Day is just around the corner. So how are you celebrating your mama this Sunday? Use that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. Mm -hmm. Now, baby marrow fritters are the perfect savory breakfast item. And we are making them even more decadent with poached eggs when we come back. Clover cheese is for those who love life. Where everything falls into place and melts away our cares. Adding joy and stretching our imagination. Clover, for the love of cheese. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to our Thursday Masterclass with Chef Jumi and Esther Milan. Now sticking with the Mother's Day celebrations, we're moving on to a more savory dish. Esther will show us how to make the perfect poached egg served with baby marrow fritters. So let's get into it. Okay, so we are making the baby marrow fritters. I'm going to grate a couple of baby marrows in a bowl. Okay. <laughs> and if you were to just break down the simple ingredients that we okay. need to whip this up, I mean, we can yeah. get it all detailed quite perfectly mm -hmm. on our website. But what do we have spread out? Okay, so we've got the baby marrows, we've got eggs, we've got some um, coconut flour. You can even use almond flour or you can even use plain, you know, mm. cake flour or whatever you have. And then salt, pepper, and we're going to serve it with some cottage cheese and the poached egg. Beautiful. I love this. And I also have the fact that you mentioned that you've got some coconut flour. You can also add some almond flour. And, you know, yes. you can mix it up the way you want. Because <laughs> if your mother is anything like my mother, <laughs> my don't know. Me. They don't hit me. <laughs> but my mother is always on some type of bunting diet, keto diet. So this is essentially perfect for someone like her. <laughs> well, your mom and I are in the same boat right now because I'm <laughs> currently ketoing. I won't lie, I, I fell down the bag, band <laughs> hands, But a girl picks herself up and she makes <laughs> these fritters because they are keto friendly because of the coconut mm. flour and the high protein with the eggs yeah. and baby marrow. Very yeah. green, very good for you. So yeah. thank you, Esther, because now I was feeling very guilty. <laughs> But now with this you option, it's the same you know? Okay, so <laughs> as you ladies are just grating away there on that side, I also have to say that even though we are mentioning all of these health fads and um, ideas and different lifestyles that you can kind of take on when it comes to your diet and culinary skills, but you know what? We're 
celebrating every type of woman this Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Small, big, uh, whether you love your junk food like myself, I love my pizza and I love my wings and my fries, or if you're trying to keep it healthy in the kitchen, you know, this one's for you. Definitely, Clarissa. So what I'm going to be starting right now is we have those poached eggs that we're going to be making. And as we always say, whenever you're making poached eggs, it's very important to make sure you have some sort of acid in the liquid, whether it be lemon juice, whether it be vinegar. I'm using apple cider vinegar today, but any vinegar that's, anything that's tart and very acidic that helps to keep your uh, poached egg in, intact. In, intact. Um, I just added a bit of salt to the um, grated baby marrows. This helps to um, pull out some of the water. Mm. So then when I actually fry it off, it's not too watery, the bath, so it doesn't go all over the place. So yes, we're gonna drain it in a bit. I just wanna mix this through. And on my side, I've just grated some cheese. Yeah, you know, you can never have too much cheese. Yes, we're gonna <laughs> add cheese to this as well, to the fritters. Okay. Yes. But so this trick that uh, Esther's showing us reminds me of that time when we were making the baby marrow, the, the eggplant rather, you remember? <laughs> and we were making those steaks and showing you where if you add the salt to them and you let them sit, it actually Thank pulls you. out all of the liquid from this. I so. mean, let me remind our viewers <laughs> there, I thought that this to totally elevated the eggplant game. Our aubergines is something that I don't necessarily like all the time, but it's just so good for you. It's so nutritious. So Domi has showed us fresh new techniques to be able to get the best out of your aubergine. And that was essentially just soaking it in salt. And then as you soak it in the salt, then all that water kind of drains out yes. and sits at the bottom. And this is the similar technique that you're now using for your baby marriage. Just trying to make sure that it kind of comes together quite well. Yes. Uh, the, you're draining it essentially. Yes, I'm basically like, I'm squeezing. You can see the liquid is coming out. Um, the longer you leave it to stand, the more liquid will come out. But uh, you can just... A minute here or there, you know. Fine. You don't want to be in the kitchen the whole day. Of course. <laughs> We're trying to celebrate with Mamzo. We can't yes. be whipping it up too long in the kitchen. <laughs> um, I also love the fact that it's almost instant instantaneous. You can see that water separating from the baby marrow just like that. It's just that yes. easy. Very easy. <laughs> so I'm just going to squeeze everything out and then I'm going to add the mozzarella that you grated. Yes. I mean, that mozzarella just broke apart so simply, so easily. Mm. Um, I do love myself a good cheese everyone says that in fact I was with my aunt over the Easter holidays in Durban <laughs> oh, da. and she was like hey palisa me na no cheese you always putting cheese 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 I'm like yes girl we're trying to elevate the flavors <laughs> elevate the game in the kitchen and for me a simple way of doing that is adding cheese and here we're incorporating the mozzarella within the baby marrow mm. fritters just to bind it as yes. another binding agent it'll help to keep them together <laughs> when you cook them okay. So, Palisa, can you see the amount of water that's in there? So, this is what we say to people about um, draining them because I'm going to show you, a, uh, not a trick, I'm going to show you how they look when you don't drain them. So, the whole idea now is we're trying to show you how to keep them together because you don't want your fritters. They're not like pancakes in this instance where you just let them go all over the plate. Yeah. You de with these, these ones, you want them to be intact and yes. to look, you know, well put together. You want them to be a fritter. I mean, you're going <laughs> to put an egg on top, so... It's got a hole. <laughs> On that note, I should probably get started with my eggs. I'm just a and little concerned. Sorry, look at the difference yes. in the quantity as well. Sure. This is with so. water, that is yeah. without water. Magical. <laughs> Magical. Okay. Awesome stuff. I'm going to get started on my eggs because I figure these are quite simple, right? Are we doing them in the pan? Are we doing them in the um, oven? Yes. Um, we're going to do them in the pan, but you can also do them in the oven, um, whatever you prefer. Um, in the oven, you can actually do a lot at once. So you can just um, line a baking sheet with baking paper, and then you just do your little blotchies and then bake them. Where here, you can only do a couple at a time. Mm. Uh, okay. But I mean, it's still good either way. I mean, it just also depends on who you're trying to treat. If you're <laughs> just treating mom in the pan, it goes. But if you're feeding the whole family, which mm. much looks like my household, <laughs> you've got to put them in the oven, honey. you got to put them yeah. in the oven. Okay, show us, do me the magic. Okay, as you can see, the water's bubbling away. The whole trick is well when it comes to making poached eggs. Yes, the water is boiling, but now we take it down to a, a simmer. So you, you want the water to be hot enough to cook the egg, but you also don't want it to bubble away because if it does, what happens is your egg is also going to go all over the place. So you don't want the water to be too uh, rough, to be bubbling too much. And just a reminder, it's water infused mixed with um, uh, vinegar, Correct. apple cider vinegar or a normal white vinegar, whatever you choose. So it is boiled water with that uh, vinegar already In inside. Correct. And then you're creating your little well. Correct. So all I'm doing now is with a spoon, I'm creating a bit of a whirlpool in the center and I drop the egg right in the center and as you can see this egg luckily 
just it came together. Mm. But most times, if your egg is not fresh, you see all these little trails, it's gonna be mm. all over the place. Your, your water will practically be white. So now that it's coming together, I'm gonna turn my, uh, my heat up just a little bit to start cooking the egg. Mm. And then this gives the, the egg enough time to cook. And it's not too hot, it's not bubbling all over the place, it's just cooking the egg. So we leave that be and then carry on with the rest of food. Okay. <laughs> I, this what? truly is an extreme <laughs> sport. We are sweating here in the kitchen, guns are blazing, but it is fun and we're learning here. Essentially that whirlpool that we were creating just makes sure that the water hugs that egg mm -hmm. so that yeah. the egg doesn't go all over the place. You know, we're creating mm -hmm. that friction and that energy to kind of keep that egg white. Let me hold you, <laughs> you know, hugging it all together. And on your side, sticking to the egg theme, you've already added your eggs. Yes, I've added eggs just to bind it as well. A little bit of salt and pepper, always seasoning. Um, um, and the mozzarella that you grated for me. And now I'm gonna add some of the, um, the coconut flour. And so I'm not gonna put everything in at once because coconut flour really absorbs a lot of liquid. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now it's time to put our mixture in the pan. I can see you're oiling it quite well. Yes, adding a bit of oil. You can also use a non-stick pan, um, but this one will work perfectly as well. Just and I see that you around. also have it quite hot, ready for action. Yes, you need to... Let the fritters set so you can turn them around mm -hmm. easily. Beautiful. Here's some more cheese. I know you asked for more cheese. So as soon as you put that down there, I mean, you're just looking for a round enough flavor. Yes, it doesn't have to be... Um, shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you are just... It's home cooking. It's not mm -hmm. supposed to be fancy. Domi, yes, congratulations. Mama. A perfect poached <laughs> egg. <laughs> it is, and I just did the touch test now, and it's nice and soft in the center. Yum. I would call this a medium egg, closer to soft, um, so which is a perfectly poached egg. Just like I like it. Just like you like it. And Balisa, can, can I just show the difference of how this looks. I've put everything yeah. that Esther put in, but you can see that it's still a lot more runnier compared to how that mm. uh, mixture is. So the, it makes a difference. Draining it makes a huge difference. But uh, Esther, you've got some that you've made in the oven because you were telling us yes. how you can make some on the stove and some in the can. oven. Um, let me just take this out. Just like that. This looks good. I mean, there you, go. <laughs> yeah. you can put the griddle on at the end just to get it a nice color. These look really, really good, and that green is popping. Mm. I can only imagine that as soon as, Dumi, as you're plating up there, sure. um, I can just imagine as soon as you cut into that egg, the yellow with the green, oh, just oh, looks it's gonna look perfect. beautiful. Yeah. You can even add some fresh herbs, and um, we're gonna add some cottage cheese as well. Okay, where would you like me to place <laughs> our, <laughs> our egg? Just okay, maybe let's first put a bit of cottage cheese on. Okay. At the bottom. So you can do that. You can just smear it on. Okay. Make it look pretty. <laughs> and then you can put the egg on top. And we can put our egg. And then I Perfect. guess before we go too far, we should do the test, right? To make sure if it's cooked to perfection. Let's first uh, season it a bit. Okay. You know? Salt and pepper. <laughs> Salt and There we go. Another Perfect. recipe for mom that came together in less than 10 <laughs> minutes, which we are so here for. Do me as you're cutting into that egg. Voila. It was medium. I was right. It's more no. medium than salt. Oh, it's perfect. But you've got that beautiful yolk Well done. In there. Comment on our social media using the hashtag Afternoon Express to let us know how you'll be serving this dish to mom on Sunday. Now coming up, our beautiful viewers will be tuning in live to get some tips on making scrumptious crumbed lamb liver schnitzels with tomato salsa. Yeah. Clover cheese is for those who love life, where everything falls into place and melts away our cares, adding joy and stretching our imagination. Clover, for the love of cheese. Made with love by Clover.
welcome back to The Loft. Now, combining technology and the human spirit has the ability to connect those far and wide, bringing us together to share meaningful moments with friends and family. Thanks to Vodacom Home, we can do just that. In today's Masterclass Cook Along, we have two of our viewers joining us virtually from their homes to join in on the cooking fun. Now, we're back in the kitchen with Esther Milan, where we'll be making scrumptious crammed lamb liver schnitzels. <laughs> and of course, we're going to be pairing it with a delicious tomato salsa. But first, let's say hello to our viewers who will be joining us from home in our kitchen. Hey, ladies. Hi. My name is Savannah, and I am from the beautiful mother city, Cape Town. Hi, Pali. My name is Ayabulala Mbunyuza, and I'm calling from Cape Town in Mowbray. Super cute. I mean, our viewers are looking absolutely delicious. I love the fact that we're all rocking red lips, except for Utumza. What happened? I, I didn't get the memo. I don't know why you did me oh. like this day. <laughs> But one thing that we're making sure everyone is clued up on in the kitchen is when it comes to making a delicious crumbed lamb liver schnitzel with a tomato salsa. So what do we need? Okay, so for the schnitzels, we need the lamb liver. We need some flour that we're going to coat it in, um, eggs, milk, and then crumbs. Be beautiful. I, I want to say delicious, because it's beautiful <laughs> and delicious. And on my side, I'm going to be whipping up that tomato salsa. Mm. It sounds delicious. I mean, minangitu shat in. Is it tomato salsa? Salsa, like a Basically, Palisa, all we're doing in the world is that we make the same thing, mm -hmm. we give it our own trademark, our own name, and then it's literally the same thing. But for your salsa that mm -hmm. I'm making, <laughs> that you're making, I'm going to be chopping up the tomatoes. Chad, onion. Accept it. <laughs> Tomatoes, onions, guys, red onions. <laughs> That's how much you're looking at. You don't even want to deal with this onion scale. And then some lemon that I'm going to be juicing and zesting that's going to be coming to you, and that's all going to come together. I'm already loving the flavor mm. and the concept that you have here because it's the liver that's going to be nice and mellow and the tartness of that. Yes, it's going to break through that. Yes. So awesome. Okay, so Esther, let's get cooking. Let's start straight away, which mm. brings us to question number one. Now, before we get started on this Masterclass Cook Along, Ayabulela, I believe you've got a question for Esther. What's your question? Hi, Esther. My question for today is, um, with the liver, does it have to be lamb liver or any kind of liver? And besides liver, can we use any other type of meat? I love that question coming yeah. from Ayabulela because we were talking about the mm. off cuts of meat, the types of meat that aren't celebrated as much. Uh, yes. So can we whip it up and change the meat? Of course, we can. Um, you can even use ox liver. You can, as you said, chicken liver will work as well. It's obviously just going to be small little <laughs> craft livers then. Um, you can use any meat if you want to like um, you can use pork you can use beef mm. um, you can even use game mm. you can use like kudu liver that will be fantastic wow or things like that so go wild <laughs> it seems as if the sky is the limit honey go wild when it comes to your meat honey <laughs> I've started chopping up my onions here, and I think the, the red onion is a little bit more forgiving, Balissa, mm. when it comes to those fumes. Uh, maybe I spoke too soon because it's happening again. But anyway, <laughs> are you tearing up? <laughs> Esther, do you have any tricks on how to chop your onion and make sure you don't cry? Uh, contact lenses. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm joking. Well, if you don't have that, um, um, you can put the onions in the fridge. That mm -hmm. also helps. Um, otherwise, just keep it tissue handy. The reason why I'm so emotional, one, it's Mother's Day very soon, mm. and two, I'm very, like, I can't stop celebrating the fact that my darling Balisa is a softer nominee. Balisa, I can't <gasps> get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where's Tony going? <laughs> I mean, I think from our Tuesday show, we're keeping the <laughs> celebrations going, keeping it going. But you know what? Um, I'm going to be one of those annoying people who say, <laughs> I couldn't have done it without you. But that's so true. I mean, I wouldn't be the presenter I am if it wasn't for the team, if it wasn't for me being able to learn and experience when it comes to not only the kitchen, but interviews that we sit on the couch. So this is essentially part of the process. Uh, Saft and all. <laughs> <laughs> Tears of joy indeed. Tears of joy indeed, Balissa. So I've chopped up the onions here. Uh, and I'm going to get started with the, the rest of the salsa. But I just want to find out, Esther, what other uh, ingredients would we use or put into the salsa if we wanted to? Uh, well, fresh herbs always uh, goes well with that. Um, you can even put um, a bit of chili in it, garlic, um, season it, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can put like roasted cumin seeds, oh, roasted nice. coriander. That's delicious as well. Okay, it's looking pretty good when it comes to the tomato salsa. I'm well on my way and chopping it up. <laughs> I'm just making sure that I leave them in quarters. Um, I first take the baby tomato, put it, in, chop it in half, and then I chop it in another half, and that should be <laughs> bite-sized enough, I think. 
think, um, and I think that Tumi, you did such a good job as well with the onions, making sure that we're not struggling with mm -hmm. the salsa, that we're able to eat it and enjoy it bite by bite, bit by bit. <laughs> so I'm just gonna flour it now, and then after that, I'm going to uh, whisk together the egg. Um, and milk and then dip it in there. Now I've seen schnitzels put together almost every type of way from chicken schnitzel to pork schnitzel but it's quite interesting here making a lamb liver schnitzel and you've decided to crumb it. I mean I've, I always know schnitzels are crumbed which mm. brings me to Savannah's question. Savannah what's your question? For the liver I would like to know do you have to fry it with the crumbs or can you do it without the crumbs as well? Um, of course you can do it without the crumb. Um, you can even, um, if you want, if you don't want like a gluten uh, crumb, you can use uh, sunflower seeds, ground that, even coat it in the sunflower seeds, and that's delicious as well. Okay, Savannah, so do you feel like you've got a good hold on how to prepare this and how to fry it up? Yes, definitely. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. I love the fact here that we're being able to connect with our viewers all the way here in our kitchen in their homes. We'd be able to share in the tips and the tricks when it comes to cooking, making it uh, that much more fun, that much more educational, and of course, wonderful. Connecting us far and wide. <laughs> True, Balissa. And the one thing I also love about this recipe is a lot of people aren't really fans of liver. I mean, it took me a while to get in, to fall in love with liver yeah, because that's true. it was not always prepared the right way. And I think mm. this way over here gives you uh, an option on how to prepare mm. it and still enjoy the tastiness of the liver, but then that nice crumb on the outside, it sort of uh, misdirects your attention yeah. from the actual liver on the inside. And I mean, you don't see liver. True. Mm. You see like this crumbed piece of meat mm. and you're like, yeah, you just go for it. But <laughs> I do love myself a good liver though, um, but I also like my liver not cooked all the way True. through. Mm. Is that possible with this recipe? Yes, of course. Um, it actually, if you overcook it, it becomes too dry. Mm. So yes, just keep an eye on it while you're cooking. <laughs> We're celebrating our mothers uh, today on the show. And I think that everyone in the entire country around is celebrating their moms too, from the start of the week up until Sunday. Now, when we do speak about moms, we doesn't have to be a biological mother. It can mm. be someone who is a mom-like figure to you. Someone that you cherish, a maternal figure. And I think that we all have those in our households. I love that. <laughs> now, my tomato sauce is quite well on its way. I've chopped up the tomato, I've chopped up the onion. Can I put my olive oil now and can I get that um, lemon juice? Oh, lemon yes. juice from Dumi. There you go. And as I am putting this together, this tomato salsa, super simple, I believe Ayabulela has another question for us. So I know your 30 scrumptious um, <laughs> meals go very chopped up. That goes beautifully with schnitzels as well. But what I do love, okay. Ayabulela, about this delicious tomato salsa, it adds the freshness to the dish. <laughs> elevating it mm. a bit. So I would like to encourage you to try it out at home. And if you want to find out where you can get those recipe and ingredients list, just head over to our Afternoon Express website and we've detailed everything for you. I love the fact that though our crumbed lamb liver schnitzel mm. came together in a matter of minutes. Mm. They've browned all the way out and I'm almost certain that it's time to get dishing. Yes, these thin ones are definitely cooked. We can take them out. Yeah. Just gonna... Put it here. Make sure that excess oil is off the yes. schnitzel. And then Dumi, just on the side there, um, are you going to be putting your tomato salsa on the top of the livers? I will. Um, however, if you're going to be serving this that's going to be enjoyed a bit later, I would suggest don't put the salsa on the top because it will force the, the crumb, it will make the crumb go soggy and we don't want there that. There you go. Because we're about <laughs> to indulge. Oh yeah, I didn't think of a soggy crumb. No, yeah. we don't want that. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's all about the balancing of textures as well. Correct. Well, from us here in the kitchen, thank you so much. Uh, I know she doesn't want to be called chef, but when you put something <laughs> like this together. <laughs> I can't help but call you Chef Esther. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies at home. Goodbye. Bye. Mwah, oh, absolute superstars. <laughs> now I love that we can come together to share moments like these in the kitchen with our viewers, thanks to Vodacom Home. Vodacom is celebrating what the human spirit can achieve when combined with technology, shaping the future and the way we connect with friends and family, opening a world of opportunities. Visit Vodacom Home for amazing home internet deals, including super fast fiber, plug and play LTE or 5G. Now show your mom how sweet you think she is by getting the family to make her this easy red velvet beetroot cupcake recipe. That's coming up next.
your family connects, we go further together. Vodacom. Join Olive Pride Chef's Tour and travel the country as we cook along with Luyanda Mafanya, Ruben Riffle and Young Bride every Tuesday on Afternoon Express. Win one of ten cooking appliances weekly or a grand prize of a kitchen makeover worth 150,000 rand. To enter, buy any Olive Pride pack and dial star 120 star 2462 star with your unique code to enter. Prepare to be proud. Welcome back to the kitchen with all my ladies. <laughs> now, ladies, wow. I mean, we are certainly cooking up a storm in the kitchen today. Esther has been taking us on the road, rather a food journey, if I can say. And to end it all off, she has something simple and special for the kids and dads who need a little help spoiling mom on this <laughs> Mother's Day. Now, we're making a red velvet beetroot cupcake. I'm here for it, girl. Where do we start? <laughs> so first off, we need to uh, boil our beetroot. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be liquidized and then that we're going to use to color the cupcakes. Then we're going to um, the dry ingredients, the flour, the cocoa, the baking powder and the salt, we're going to sift that and then we're going to mix together the eggs 
oil, um, the vanilla, and the sugar. Beautiful. And then everything's going to come together. And you are doing the icing. <laughs> oh, I love it. The cherry on top, just like myself, a cherry on top. <laughs> and to make this icing, it's super simple, super easy. We've got my butter. We've got the um, cream cheese. We also have the icing sugar. And is this some vanilla to me? That yes. is definitely some vanilla palette. And the reason why you've got the task of making the icing is because you don't like your, uh, you don't like sweet stuff. Yeah. So now you basically get to decide how much uh, icing sugar goes into that because this is a different kind of icing where it's not overly sweet. We're using cream cheese or cottage cheese if you've got that. So mm. the, the, the more sugar you add, the sweeter it gets, it gets, but also the more liquefied it gets. So meaning this would work in your favor, Bali, because the less sugar there is in there, the thicker the, the, the icing is and the better it is because it sits nicely on top of the cupcake. Beautiful, Dumi, yeah. Sorry, you can even um, put less sugar in the cupcakes itself mm -hmm. as well if you don't like that intense sweetness. Mm. And the beetroot also adds sweetness to mm. the cupcakes naturally, so. Beautiful, yeah. ladies. I mean, so going exactly to what Dumi has told me to do, I've added that cream cheese, I've added the butter, and I'm first going to make sure that that is all the way incorporated through the mixture and then slowly by, by but surely, little by little, I'm going to be adding that, uh, that sugar in. And for added flavor, you can even add grated uh, lemon zest or orange zest. Oh. Yeah, if you like it to be a bit more fruity. <laughs> so not only are there, we can uh, doubling up with the beetroot, but you can also add that citrus flavor, that added vitamin Definitely. C, which I am here for, moving into the cold and flu season, into the mixture. Okay, so how's it going that side, ladies? So I've got those, that beetroot that we made earlier, and yes, we've decided to boil it because we want to make sure that the beetroot mm. is nice and soft. You do have the option of roasting your beetroot because um, it actually can get nice and soft and tender yes. in the center. And now it's time to gently add in that uh, that sugar, that icing sugar. Right. And you would ping it up there as well, love. Yes, I am. And then I'm going to add the beetroot to this mixture as well. And then I'm going to mix everything together and put it in the cupcake holders. Now, Esther, I just want to touch on something because I know we're making a beetroot uh, colored cake, mm -hmm. red velvet with uh, beetroot. But I know that you've also got some cocoa powder in there. What is the relationship between the cocoa powder and the beetroot? Because <laughs> I always find that they're actually made together. So uh, the thing is beetroot has a very strong taste. Mm -hmm. So to hide that a bit, <laughs> you will always add a bit of cocoa powder. Okay. Yeah, so it's just hiding the veg. <laughs> <laughs> right, awesome. So I'm gonna go in now and blitz up our beetroot. Because it's cooked all the way through, it shouldn't be a problem um, blending it all up. But should it be, need a bit of assistance, mm. you can always add a little bit of water. Yes. also has quite a lot of natural waters mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So that should also help you in the mixing and blending kind of process. And, and also it. in the cupcakes itself, it adds moisture. So it's a oh. moist cupcake instead of a dry one. <laughs> <laughs> So it's simple, you basically cook your beetroot and then you go mm. in there. If you're, if you're using it for a juice, perhaps, if you're making a, a beetroot juice, then mm. you wouldn't cook your beetroot. You just keep it raw, right? Uh, yes, but then you have to use a juicer and then yeah. uh, it kind of separates the... Um, yeah, the actual that pulp stuff. of the... <laughs> <laughs> With the juice. Okay, and then to finish this off, I'm also just gonna make the strawberries that go on top of these beautiful cupcakes. Oh yeah, decorate. Love that. And on my side, um, when it comes to this icing, now I'm sure you saw the consistency and the texture that it was before. I slowly but surely added that icing sugar in, and now it has thickened all the way up. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at that. Now, Esther, this is essentially the consistency we want. Yes, that's perfect for the cupcakes. Um, I just added the beetroot here. Look at the beautiful color. Oh. <laughs> and this is all natural, so you don't have to feel bad about it. That's <laughs> almost as vibrant as that dragon fruit we were enjoying just a few weeks ago. I mean, the purple color, I nearly said orange. That purple color was outstanding, and this is essentially just mirroring that mm. very same kind of idea, making sure that the color stands out, and it's that art piece that we need naturally. Fellas, I love that because I actually hadn't thought about using dragon fruit to color my fruit, and that, that, that actually makes mm. sense. And we've done so many things on the show, I come to think of it, we could use turmeric <laughs> to color our cakes as well if you want them. Yes. Yellow. You could use the dragon fruit, we've used beetroot. We're keeping it natural, you know, as much as, <laughs> yeah. as, much as we're making decadent uh, cookies and, mm. and cupcakes, it's good to know that we still keep it as natural as possible. Yeah, it's all about that root veg. Let me have a taste of this icing and tell you how I feel. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> yes. Do we have a winner? <laughs> this is how I like it. Do me exactly what you spoke about, the fact that it is not too mm. sweet. We're balancing flavors here in the kitchen, making sure that it's not too bitter, not too salty, mm. not too sweet. It's something for everyone. And I'm so sure that the kids are gonna have so much fun whipping this up for mom on Sunday. Can you just bring out that finished product for us? And let's yeah. start decorating and putting it together. You've already chopped up the strawberries quite nicely. There's the icing. And I also see you've got a cute little tidbit here, written love for mom. Oh, yes. You'll see that, you'll see that when it's time to decorate. You'll see that when it's time to decorate. Okay, perfect. So uh, Esther, because this is your baby, I want to make sure that I plop it on nicely. So we just plop it on. Yes, and smear it a bit. And... Smear it, I'm gonna use the back of my spoon for that. So luscious. And that's all, it's nice yes. and simple and easy. And oh, it looks delicious. <laughs> I'm one of those few people who believe a cake is not complete without icing. So no, I'm glad not. that this is the then kind it's of just icing. a muffin. It is just you know. <laughs> you have to. Again, just remember to head over to afternoonexpress.co.za for the full ingredients list and recipe to be making this magic for Umana. Beautiful. Now we've yeah. been learning tips and tricks <laughs> from one of the best in the biz. We're getting to know award-winning food writer, recipe developer, and cookbook author Esther Milan better when we return. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now on social media, since we are celebrating our mothers this weekend, show us and let us know how you'll be celebrating Mother's Day with your mom. I want to see those pictures, I want to see those videos, and don't forget to use the hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. We're celebrating the women that birthed us, the ones that raised us, and the ones that nurtured us throughout. Yes, bring the family, 100%. Your cousin's coming over, get the crush and I'll get the eyes. More crush mouth? 100% refreshing, 100% goodness. Made with love by Clover. 
Chef Tumi and Esther, let's get cooking. Now, can you just give us a quick rundown and recap what we made? So today we made the mealy and bacon bread. We made liver snitchels, slam liver snitchels with salsa. We made these beautiful fritters with um, poached eggs, your mm. famous poached eggs, and uh, beetroot red velvet cupcakes. <laughs> I have a sweet tooth, Esther, so I had to start with dessert. In Soweto, we say nyakvuma. Mm. <laughs> Stamp of approval, they definitely are divine. But oh, beetroot's coming through. And also that cocoa mm. powder that you were talking about definitely comes through. Now, something that I've been dying to try from the top is this <laughs> Lamb liver schnitzel. Now, honey, I do love a good schnitzel, but I want to find out, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. So already, <laughs> from the very first cut, you've nailed it. When I said I don't like it cooked completely all the way out, this is what I'm talking about. This is exactly how I love it. I love it a little pink on the inside, mm. but you know the real proof is in the pudding, in the eating, and I'm going to want to make <laughs> sure that I've got a little bit of, a, of everything, <laughs> a little bit of salsa in there, a little bit of schnitzel. Delicious! Yay! <laughs> 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 you see that jump in energy? That's what it's all about. The texture, mm. the flavor is definitely there. Tick, 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 girl. I love this. Um, I also want some of that Millie. Mm. Oh, yes, you've that got to try that. Do me, how's it going that side, girl? It's <laughs> a feast. Girl, I'm putting everything on my plate. <laughs> One thing I've learned is that a lot of times I'm here listening to everyone and I don't end up eating, so not today. I'm not making that mistake. <laughs> and yes, Esther, I also agree. I love mm. my liver a little bit on the pink side. Yes. And this looks perfectly cooked. Oh, Thank I'm you so, happy. so much. So then, Tumi, let me take over the cooking now because clearly you, you, you want to eat, so let me tell <laughs> the rest of it. <laughs> Esther, now you are just a woman about your talent. You're all about the writing. You're also all about the cooking and so much so you've walked away a three-time award winner of the Galiova the yes. Galiova <laughs> Awards love that I mean so what does success mean to you you achieved all of this before or whilst you were turning 30 yes, and I think that 30. that's something to be said um, throughout any industry I think when you set goals for yourself and you actually achieve them mm. then I think you you know you're, you're you are on the path towards success mm. Mm. Okay, so it's all about writing down your goals and then working to achieve yes, them. Yes. And then when you achieve them, then you can say you're successful. Yes, definitely. And ambition and passion for what you do. I mean, yeah. that is what it's all about. Girl, <laughs> dive in, keep eating. One and thing, whilst you're doing that... One thing doing. you've definitely achieved is you've sold me on this crumbed liver because, like I said, <laughs> I've had liver mm. a couple of different ways. And the crumbed liver, and one thing I'm not sure you guys are picking a bomb, but the sweetness of the red onion yeah. mm. pairs so well with the tartness of that dressing that we've got in there. Mm. And and the saltiness of the the lamb liver itself it works and the liver so is rich mm. so i mean the tomato and everything works together well mm -hmm. absolutely Delicious. balancing it out mm -hmm. now i also want to find out from you esther you know someone like you who's been able to take a talent in writing and being able to couple, couple it with food i mean mm -hmm. a lot of people won't be able to find that link and you are a published cookbook author i mean congratulations mm -hmm. so Thank then you. number one how then do you choose the recipes that go into your cookbooks and the <laughs> process of writing it out? Mm. How then do you make it a story, make that story make sense to whoever is reading your cookbook? So the cookbook I did was with High School Note and You mm. because I do write um, articles for them. And um, the most important thing is you have to decide what is your vision with this book? Mm. and who's your market and mm. you know you have to put a bit of yourself into it as well but I mean the book needs to sell <laughs> <laughs> so you need to take the reader into consideration as well yeah and when you do think about a reader who's mm. going to pick up pick up your cookbook yes. who are you trying to target are you trying to target oh, wow. the young <laughs> fresh new in the working industry new in the working world or are you like aiming for those golden oldies the classics <laughs> the mamas who are looking mm. to spice up their old traditional food um, I love heritage. That is one thing. And I love the cultures in our country. And I love to bring it together. Mm. So I don't think I want... the. When I give out recipes, I don't want it to be specific to a certain age. Mm. I want to... I want to teach people the heritage of our country. So it doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, yeah. Yeah. if you need to take something, an old recipe, and add a twist or two to make it more, you know... Yeah, like. Elevated. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the younger generation, then, I mean... So be it. Mm. 
I love how flexible you are, and that's essentially what I'm seeing mm. and experiencing as I'm enjoying this delicious <laughs> mini bread. I mean, what a spin on eggs and bacon. I'm loving it. And the sweet corn is mm. beautiful. And the great thing about it is that, that um, sweet corn bread mm. with the bacon and everything paired with the salsa actually it feels like something you can eat mm. like a snack in the morning because it's mm. basically a full add one. some avo to that <laughs> and i mean done you've that got breakfast it. done mm. it's delicious good Thank to you go. very much esther um i know i'm kind of putting you on the spot but oh. i want to hear from the heart the daughter esther i mean when you think of your mom mm. what she means to you and the journey you've been able to walk with her what message do you want to send out to your mom this mother's day I think I would like to say thank you to my mom. Um, I mean, she is my best friend and she's always been supporting me and helping me and she always believes in me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's not a lot of people that can say that. Mm -hmm. And I can say that, that about my mom. Mm -hmm. So, love you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Tumi, I I'm know. gonna throw you straight there. I know that we had an opportunity to speak to mom on Tuesday, but I mean, right now, as we are rounding off the week, we've had more time to kind of reflect on who and what our mothers are to us. So what would you like to say to Uman? Well, more than anything, I love you and I cannot imagine my life without you. I mean, Balasa, you've got it on, you hit the nail on the head when you talk about how as you grow, you realize that she is your best friend. She's always wanted the best for me and Mama, I thank you because had it not been for that, I probably wouldn't have made some of the decisions mm. I make today. Mm. Um, and I love you, you're great. <laughs> Mothers across Mzanti will certainly be feasting on these delectable meals. Now, if you want to refine any of your steps that we've shared this week before Sunday morning, catch our Saturday repeats from 8.30 a.m. But tune in again next Tuesday and Thursday as we take you along the spice route and explore the bountiful flavors of Indian cuisine. But until then, good night, stay safe and happy eating. <laughs> Cheers to family favorites and recipes passed from mothers to daughters. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.